this forest once covered all of Piney Ridge, but no longer is the region a mystery. Modern highways have penetrated the darkness, brought in the light. Not so in Oxhead Woods, further south. Step into it off the abandoned road that hugs its length, and it's like passing through a wall and closing the door behind you. Obsolete trails wander vaguely, crisscross or break at right angles for no reason. Only one leads to the Morgan farm. Pete Morgan's farm has the allure of a walled castle that everybody knows about, but few have entered. It's only access to the outside world is a country road that passes by. Some miles north connects with a highway near the Renton farm. Joe Renton, like the other farmers hereabouts, is up and coming. Raises good apples. Fine soil everywhere in the valley. The young people from miles around come to the high school. The boys graduate a little older than those in the city. That's because they take time out for planting and helping with the harvest. They're a healthy lot. And girls don't come prettier any place. You're growing up, Tibby. You're almost a woman. Almost. I'm woman enough already. I wouldn't say that. Oh, what do you know about anything? You never got past the ninth grade. I'm doing plenty of things they don't teach in school. content of the way things were. Maybe an outsider will spoil it. But it would be so much easier for you if Nate would come and help out at the end of the day. Anything between you and Nate? He and Tibby Renton are going steady. All right, I'll see the boy. Never could turn you down, could I? <laughs> says 
good things about you, Nate. Maybe you're not as stocky as you might be. Stop growing too soon, Mr. Morgan. Mm. How's your mother's store getting along? Oh, well, some days we don't even make a dollar. What do you want to see me about, Mr. Morgan? You know about my leg? Wood. My sister and Meg have got a curious idea that uh, it's hard to climb a ladder with a wooden leg. <laughs> well, it isn't. Oh, sir. Much more, they've got an idea that uh, things are getting a little run down here. Can't do as much as I used to. So they've talked me into hiring somebody. Uh, help along with the evening chores. I'll pay 35 cents an hour. Could you make it four bits? It's over an hour's walk home afterwards. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I'll pay 50 cents an hour. Could he start today? Sure it's all right with you, May? Oh, yes. hasn't become too used to doing things alone. I do hope it works out. You sure you don't want any more, Nate? No, thanks, ma'am. Bet nobody will believe me when I tell them I had supper here. Why not, Nate? Well, didn't you know you and Miss Ellen are known as the Mysterious Morgans? Are we? Well, they won't say it anymore. Not when I tell them what a swell layout you've got here, and that you spread the best table in the valley. Because they're so self-sufficient here. You seldom have any need to go to town. What else do they say about us, Nate? Oh, nothing. Except things like Meg not being your daughter, or even related. Why don't they ask me? Well, I, I guess they'd rather whisper gossip and find out the truth. What gossip? Well, they say Meg's mother and father ran away and left her when she was still a baby. Well, that's not true, Nate. Meg's mother and father went down south to find a new farm. They left Meg in our care. He died down there in a runaway. He and I adopted Meg legally. There's nothing to be whispered about Meg. She was only two years old then. There's nothing wrong with being adopted. I'm grateful. Sure. And the next time I hear anybody gossiping about it, I'll say, so what? Meg isn't the only adopted girl in the world. Well, I, I hate to eat and run, folks, but I think I'd better get started. It's kind of late, so I thought I'd take a shortcut through Rockshead Woods. You know your way through those woods? No, but the wind cleared the sky. Well, I'd take the long way around if I were you. I've owned the Oxford Woods for years, and I'm as brave as the next man, but I wouldn't cross through those woods at night. Woods haven't scared me since I was a kid, day or night. Yes, but you said you didn't know Oxford Woods. A tree's a tree, and a trail's a tree. A trail's lead nowhere. Get the boy go. I don't want him to get lost. Get the door. I don't want him to get hurt. Wait. Don't take the Oxford Woods. The footbridge across the creek is out. Oh, don't look across. On the spot on the other side. Find my way around. It's a little bit more than a long way around. But I'll save two miles by cutting through the wall. But you won't save yourself from the screams in the night that are lodging your bones all your life. Screams from where? From the right house. Well, let's go. 
Sleeping here tonight, so don't you worry about it. <laughs> uh, hard work and the big supper never hurt any boy. Oh, don't you mention it. We're glad to have him. Good night. How did you know he was back?
to be a great help on it. You happen to get in here. I ran here. You scared the daylight out of me last night. Seems like the truth shouldn't scare anybody, man or boy. The truth? You and your screams in the night almost. What are you talking me? about? Now don't tell me I imagined all that stuff. I went in those woods and I heard things. What things? I don't know. I don't know whether it was the screams you were talking about or just the wind. You leave well enough alone, sir. Go ahead and wash up. Join us for breakfast and you can catch the school bus with me. What kind of a guy is Pete, anyway? He's always been wonderful to me. Kind and generous. For my last birthday, he sent to the city and bought me the most wonderful furniture he could buy for my room. He's always been that way. But what about that red house? I remember hearing him talk about it a long time ago. But I've never heard him mention it since. You haven't? No. He just warned me to stay out of those woods since I was little. Do you know anything about those screams? I don't know, Nate, and I'd be afraid to find out. Okay, let's go move in with the Morgan. Okay, so I'm working there. We'll make something out of that. Nerve, Nate Storm. Where were you last night when I felt like I said I would? Working. Working? All night long? Oh, Tibby, can't a guy even earn chore money at the Morgans without you throwing a fit? Not if it takes all night. You've given enough of your life to me. You go down to town and tell Don you're ready any time he is. He's being transferred north. Well, that settles it. Here he's been courting you since I was in grammar school. If you don't marry him now, he'll meet some chick up north, and then you'll be a dead duck. <laughs> well, I've got to change. I'll be late at the Morgan. How do you like it up there? Oh, it's okay. Stay good. I mean, well, a couple of things got me wondering. How did Pete Morgan lose his leg? He fell down a cliff in the Oxhead Woods. It was a long time ago. You were still a baby. It was Dr. Burns' first case in the valley. He amputated the leg on the Morgan kitchen table. I wonder if it's the one I ate at. That's the 
first time Dr. Byrne ever met Ellen Morgan. Everybody knew he fell in love with her. Nothing ever came of it. Wonder why? Still a bachelor. I don't know. They still act like they love each other. A few times I've seen them meet. But she chose to devote her life to her brother Pete, I guess. Seems a shame. Just like it would be a shame if you don't marry Don and go north with him. If I do, how long will it be before you and Kitty get married? Oh, search me. Sometimes the more I know about women, the less I know about women. Guy needs more than a high school education just to find out what they're going to do next. Will you be staying at the Morgans again tonight? No. I'm going to take a shortcut to Rockshead Woods by daylight. So I'll know my way back here tonight. Well, if you should change your mind, would you care if I go down to town and talk things over with Don? You do more than talk things over. You come back here a bride. We don't want any dead ducks in the family, do we? <laughs> Bye. We don't have to stay that way. 
Nobody's going to call me yellow. Who has? Nobody, yet. And nobody's going to. Have you been outside tonight? No. Give me your word. Of course. Why, well, you're so gloomy. Get a blanket from the chest, mate. You can stay in the helpless cabin. I warned you, but you wouldn't listen. It wasn't a piece of that red house that knocked me into the stream, Mr. Morgan. And it wasn't a scream in the night that bowled me over. It was a human. A human strong enough to nearly kill me. I figured it was you. Sometimes we figure too much on the wrong things. Things we can't ever be figured. And it's bad. Bad for everyone. It's quicksand. I need your help here, Nate. Why would I want to hurt you? There's a curse on those woods. We know that.
drop you. We've got hold of who? to be married, Phoebe? Well, I like to keep him guessing, Mr. Morgan. He's like an ornery heifer sometimes. Hard to hold down. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you at our house, Phoebe. We missed having company. You must come back often. Besides, we like to keep Nate happy. We had a pleasant day? Well, we wasted most of it looking for a haunted house in the Oxhead Woods. <laughs> I didn't know there was a haunted house in the Oxford Wood. Well, Nate says it's red and he's got to find it. Isn't that silly? Yes, it is. May I go with you? Yes. That's a 
enough trouble in this world without having to go out and look for it. Well, find what the trouble he can handle if he only knew it. Well, the swell when you are keeping a secret blabbing to Pete. I didn't blab, it just slipped out. And a fine swimming date we had, I don't think. You know, Sibby, you're mighty pretty. Especially when you're mad. And I guess maybe, maybe when you're mad, you're just about the prettiest gal there is. Are you sure you don't want me to get Pete's pickup truck and drive you home? Can't have your cake and eat it, too. You have chores to do. I'll walk home, thanks. Don't suppose I'll be seeing much of you weeknight. Well, what with final exams coming up and this new job... I know. Would it be too much to ask that we spend next Sunday by ourselves? Just you and me? Or is it more important to play hide-and-seek in the woods with Meg? Go on, get mad. Make your cheeks clean. Don't think you're going to talk me into the kiss goodbye. I want you to miss him. Long enough to make him more important than haunt his house. Save up for next Sunday. I want you to buy me that bond. Now write my name on it and buy it the next time you go to town. There's an extra ten for your trouble. Oh, I couldn't take it. Sure you could. And keep your mouth shut to boot. I'll be waiting every Sunday till you bring it. Why don't you buy it yourself? Because a guy in a village bank's got too long a nose. And because it'll be a prettier bond if you buy it for me. I better get home. You want me to help you across the stream? Thanks a 
can't tell us. Is that all our thanks I got? How much more do you want? your trespasses to home. You gave me full rights to the Oxhead Woods exclusive. I gave you the game rights in exchange for keeping trespassers out. Look, Mr. Morgan, if you can't keep your own hired hand out of these woods, maybe I should use more than a club to scare them away with. Well, why don't you? You're telling me I can use my gun? I don't want anybody to get hurt, but there's no better way of backing up a no trespassing sign than by a bullet missing somebody's skull. Okay, Mr. Morgan, I'll take care of my end. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be more than that. It's your last chance. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray to thee to bless all those on earth who are suffering in heart and mind, body and spirit. Grant them the blessing of hope and faith and strength. You haven't eaten, you haven't slept. I can use his pickup truck. I'll come on down. Bye. Now, when I was a young man and in love, Sunday was always a good day for swimming. Thanks for the use of the truck. Always ready to give love a helping hand. Aren't we, May? That's right. Now, I might add, it's a lot healthier than fouling in wood.
I, uh, I got this for your graduation. I wasn't going to give it to you until then, but because it's a gray day and because I want you to be happy, I, uh, go ahead, open it.
Got Meg all wrong. Didn't she ask you up to spend the day and have dinner? Yeah, but why? Can't anybody do anything without you figuring they've got an angle? I've always got an angle. I've got an angle on you. Girl always has an angle when she does something. Does she? Sure. Okay. And what's your reason for dawdling with that guy, Teller? What do you mean, darling? Just what I said. You think I didn't see you? How could you? Where were you? In the bus. Where'd you think I was? Oh, oh that. Yes, that. Was there some more dawdling I didn't know about? You don't think I'd be interested in a big dumb ox unless you live in plenty. Well, you were interested enough to stop and talk to him that afternoon. Well, it was sitting on our rocks. I told him to get off them. What did he say? He said he did. I'll bet. You're calling me a liar. Now, don't make something out of nothing. All I said was, I'll bet. You bet what? I'll bet. He said he'd get off your rock. And they're calling you a liar. Pop was right. Right about what? They're too bright to be wasting their time up to the mortgage for four bits an hour. They just live off their farm. They make a profit on ours. Since when is there a law against living off the earth? We're going to live off the earth someday. Before we're finished, we're going to leave our kids a good farm. I want to clear out of these hills when I get married. Since when? Since now. I don't want to be just any farm wife. As good a time as any other to find that out. Well, if you love someone, you'll do anything for them. That works both ways. Maybe someday you'll own this whole valley. And we can spend our winters in the city house. Sure. It's two station wagons and a limousine. Why not? I better get back to the morgue. What for? Let you go on with your dreaming. I'm disturbing your sleep. City house, station wagons, limousines. Great. Boy, when you dream, you really dream good. Well, aren't I worth working for? Sure. And a lot of guys are working on getting to the moon in a rocket. They think that's worth working for. But I like the ground around here. And I'd just as soon keep my feet on it. How much money have you saved doing it? None yet. Not even $750? Not even 750 cents. Why? Nothing. I was just thinking. Meg go with you? I thought she did. She was gone when you left. Didn't she leave with you the saloon? No, only as far as the port. Did she say she was going anywhere? She must have gone into the woods alone. Here, hold on. 
on this. Now, put all your weight on the other leg. We were happy here until that boy came. Hank loved me, trusted me. Did everything I asked. And then he came. I'm losing up. I fought fate 15 years ago and I lost. You know that, Ellen. I tried to stay away from that house. Yes, Pete, you tried. She kept calling. I had to go to her. Don't take it up again, dear. It's buried. It's past. Buried until that boy came here. Nate doesn't know anything about it, Pete. That's all in your mind. You think there's a man on earth who hasn't something to conceal. Every living soul has his oxhead wood. I can still see her. She knew there was nothing I could do about it. He knew it. Don't dig it up again, dear, please. Why Forget didn't it. they go before it happened? Please. Why did she scream? I loved her. She knew it. Why did she cry out? Please forgive me, dear. Put it out of your mind. Don't let it drive you mad again. It's gone. It's over. You can't touch Meg. There's nothing I can do about it. There is something we can do about it. We can protect her from the past. How can I protect her from the past when I can't shut it out myself? We can shut it out of this house. No, no, this isn't my house. There's no certain place for me on Earth. Except out there in that ice house. That's where I belong. What it makes you find out? Pete, Pete, how could you find out? I didn't want her to go. I'd rather she was dead than ever hear the screams. I'd rather she was dead. I'd rather I died out there in the muck and dirt. That's where I belong. I should have burned that place down. No, no. Just search the ashes and find her screaming. I should have burned it down and the ice house and the woods with it. Don't you dare. Don't never dare. Ellen, please, open the door. Ellen. <laughs> What's happened to her? I found her in your woods. Her leg's broken. Call Dr. Byrne. Oh, Jonathan, Pete. Next leg is broken. Come quick. Tracks through the rocks. 
road tried to follow, but it led to this hill. What hill? I don't know. I was too busy following the tracks to see. I looked down from the top into the rock. And there it was. What did it look like? Ugly and awful. But, Mace, I had the feeling I've been there before. Well, lots of people get that feeling, Mace, even if they haven't. No, this is different. I even seem to remain the ice house back against the rock. Water shimmered and hot from under it. As if it were flooded. How do you know it was an ice house? That's what scares me. I know it was. But how did I know? Well, didn't you go look? I didn't dare go without you. My heart started pounding. You didn't even scream. Yes. I think I did. I think that's why I ran. I don't know. Soundly, Junior. You were in Meg's room just now. Yes, I was. You sneaked up the tree. You were there with her in the dark. Is there a law against me seeing her? Yes, mine. Peace in this house until you came. You took her into the woods. They went into the woods on her own. She wouldn't have gone if it weren't for you. Her leg wouldn't have been broken if it weren't for you. You've got no right to treat her like a child. You've caused all the trouble you're going to. I don't want you here anymore. Get out, now! You don't need to think I want this job. I can work for Rittens any day I like. Clear out. Never trust us on my property again. If you do, you'll get hurt. Is that fair warning? Yes, that's clear enough. Take one place off. Nathan quit. He's gone to work for Tibby's folks. But I've even said goodbye. But it seems they needed him this morning. Said to say goodbye to you, Meg. That's not like Nate. He's a nice boy. What are we going to do for help? We can manage alone. Meg will soon be up and around, but we can manage alone. Just you and me and uh, Meg. Did you quarrel with me? Don't lie to me, Chief. Why should I quarrel with the boy? The same reason you killed Jeannie's husband. Because you wanted her all to yourself.
Nate's gone. He sent you his love. He needed a full-time job now that school's about over. I was putting some dishes away and the wall cupboard came down on my arm. We'll miss Nate, won't we? for you, isn't it? Why don't you padlock this door and go up to Morgan? I quit there, Mom. I'm going to work for the rent. Well, with Kibby around, then you won't be lonesome. I'll be okay, Mom. Well, happy honeymoon. Thanks again for everything. Goodbye, son. Why? Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Mom. too much the first time. I just want to help you. That's what I'm for. That's what I like. Oh, hi. What you got on? Honey places. You like it? All right. You might as well still be working at the Morgan for all the fun you are to me. She'd spend a little more time working around this place instead of preening your feathers like a pet canary. Maybe you'd know what it is to be tired at night. I had a nice Sunday picnic all planned for you tomorrow down by the spring. But I'm not going to waste it on you. Sleep all day if you want to. Oh, uh, just for 10 or 11. You didn't sleep till any 10 or 11 up at the Morgan's because you wanted to see her. Go so stick your head into a faucet and cool off, Kitty. If you want to go on that picnic tomorrow, I'll be here at 11. Thank you. 
I've been here every Sunday. Well, I couldn't get here before today. Who do you think you are standing me up? You've been drinking. So what? Well, I'm sorry I came at all. I'm sorry I got your old bun. Did you tell anybody? You're drunk. Who are you kidding? You can fool around with pretty boy named Storm as much as you like. But when you decide on a man, you come to me. <laughs> I got full rights to them woods. Who gave them to you? Pete Morgan. Then would you be knowing how Meg broke her leg? No, I wouldn't. But if it was you snooping around these woods, you'd get this. Come on, Tibby, let's get out of here. could always be to me. We don't need anybody else. Why don't you get me back to help? You're better off without him. I'm sure Meg misses him. She's young. She deserves the company of a nice boy like me. A little fun. That's what you said about her smell years ago. Her smell was fun. Remember? I didn't have time to learn how to dance. I was too busy earning the money that would make it possible for me to ask Jeannie to be my wife. Herb Snell was busy becoming the best dancer in the valley. Nate's like you were, not Herb. He's a fine boy, honest, a hard worker. He has a girl. What does he want with Meg? Meg needs to be with young people like Nate. 
You can condemn her to loneliness. Meg belongs here with us. You want to chain her to this place all her life? All my life, yes. I've given my life to you, Pete, because you're my brother and I love you and you need me. You know what it's meant to me, what I've lost. You know what Jonathan Byrne and I might have had. Well, would I ask you not to marry him? No, but you wouldn't let me take Meg with me if well, I did. Did you expect me to? Whatever happiness I get, I've got to find while I live. You can find happiness by giving it. Well, do you think I could find it with that boy back here? Do you think he stopped prowling in those woods until he found the red house? You wouldn't stop at that. He'd dig deeper. If he'd dig up a skull and bring it home as a trophy. What do you think that would do to Meg? What do you think would happen to her if she found out the truth? She loathed me all the rest of her life. But you've got to be fair to Meg. All right, so I'm not fair. But I can't let her go. As long as the red house stands in that quarry, my whole life is Meg's and her life is mine. <laughs> I'm going to burn that place out of Pete's mind. I don't care if it starts a forest fire going up in flames tonight. You can't go into those woods. I know them well enough. It isn't that. I didn't tell you or Nate the whole truth about how my leg was broken. I fell, but it was because somebody was shooting at me. I was afraid Nate would get shot if they... Tell her. Pete's fault for letting Teller think he owns those woods. He's just trying to scare you. But he's afraid of me. Let me go with you. No, your leg isn't strong enough. I don't want to stay here alone. Come with me as far as Nate's cabin. Lock yourself in. I'll be back before Pete knows I'm gone. Hello? Meg. Hello? Meg! Nobody can help. 
Helen's in the woods. Her. Tell her Helen. I'll take Helen around the road. Where is she? On the trail we took just before we reached the limestone rock. I'll call Dr. Vernon and Miss Karen. I'll bring a stretcher. Terry. You're not going back in there. You can't do it. You'll be lost, too. Believe me, I know the woods are evil. I know what's there. I know the danger. Oh, darling, don't. Let go of me. You don't know. Everything you need, James. Meg's coming. And we've called Jonathan. Jonathan. We need him. Does it hurt as much now? Ellen. I made a stretcher out of a blanket and a couple of weight handles. That's all I had. Did you get Dr. Burns? He wasn't in. I left a message. I called the sheriff. Breathing awfully sound. She's dead. That's the way you are with me, too. Let's do something about it. Let's borrow your father's truck and alone. Alone? Oh, he smoked Come on, baby. We'll drive across the state line. I'll cash in my barn. We're just having a honeymoon that'll top any honeymoon anybody ever had. The truck's in the orchard shed. We can head out the back road. They won't hear us. Every day for years, she's died for me. You think I can forget that? But she forgot the woods. That's what killed her. You hate me now, don't you? Yes, I think I do. You let Alan die. You defy the woods and you were hurt. She defy them. She's dead. 
Karen didn't hate me. She always understood. You leave me now, I suppose, won't you, Meg? Yes. Everything I love. Dies. And I can't lose you, can you? Don't call me that name, please. Who was she? Who was she? Was her real name Genevieve? Was she my mother, Pete? I don't know. You do know. I can't say her anymore. Yes. She was your mother. Now, are you happy? What happened to her? Meg, for the love of heaven. She was killed, wasn't she? But it was an accident. It I... wasn't an accident. Something awful must have happened. You must have hated her. Hated you... her? I've worshipped your mother. No man ever loved a woman more. She would she married your father. A man without heart, without soul. Is that why you killed her? No, no, no. You've got to believe me, Meg. I never hurt your mother. I never even so much as said a harsh word to her. And then when you were born in the Red House, I loved you like you were my own. That's why I remember the house. It is, Paul. He got jealous. He took to accusing Jeannie and me of bad things. He lied. But the worst was when he was going to take Jeannie and you away. I ran to the Red House to plead with your mother not to go. I heard him coming home in the ferry. I begged her to decide before it was too late. She got frightened. I don't know why. She screamed. There was no reason I wasn't going. Then you did kill her. No, it was an accident. I just tried to keep her quiet. I just put my hand over her mouth. Only that. She was Then he came in the door. I knew it was his fault. He was the one who killed the key. I picked up a bull whip. And I did him. But he wasn't handsome anymore. But he was dead. Finished. I was out of my mind. I picked up their bodies and I put them in the cellar. I worked the horses and the ice on them. When he broke them through in there, the mud was deep, deep enough. When I came to my senses, I, I tried to kill myself. I jumped into the quarry. I should have let you die there. Nate! Nate! Nate, where are you? Nate's gone. The second arrival, he's gone to the woods. Hello, Kelly. I love him, Katie. I love him like you love Katie, Katie. I don't know the woods at night, Katie. You do. You've got to help me stop him. I'll forget what happened. I won't hold it against you. You can make up for what you did. Jeannie will forgive you. She'll forgive you, Pete. I can end this. I can be free. Well, there's a truck over to the Red House. You go ahead. Stop the truck. I'll catch up with you. Found oh, out. What's that thought it was? What do you mean? They're after me. <laughs> Stop that time. Stop it. <laughs> Stop that time.
night. I came as quickly as I could. I telephoned the State Highway Police. Any signs of Helen? No, Sheriff. But I heard a car here in the woods. Yeah, so did I. You, Jeannie. I've come to plead with you not to go. Don't go with him, Jeannie. I can't live without you. We've come here to help me. He could be killed. Yes! I killed him, could be. Does Herb love you that much? Enough to kill for you?
Looking forward is much better than the 